Hey there, folks. In the last tutorial, we wrote a lot of logic that is required to upload a user's profile image. Today, we'll create a handler that validates the incoming multi part form request and then reaches out to our user services set profile image method that we created last time. I also want to encourage you to check out some unit tests for this tutorial that I added after recording the last video. If you go to our service layer, for example, we have this user service test file that we had already started on, but then I had decided not to continue showing all of these repetitive unit tests. However, in this case, this user service test will make use of some fixture files. And in the last tutorial, I said I'd add these in the handler layer, but decided that they ought to go into the model layer as this fixture will be used in both handler tests and service layer tests. But anyway, I recommend you check this out inside of the GitHub repository if, you're at in, if you are at all interested in creating tests that need to create an image file, for example, and then use this in an HTTP form request. Hey, I'd even appreciate your feedback if you're willing to provide it on these tests. For example, I had some trouble figuring out a good way to test an oversized file, which you'll see in this tutorial, we're going to create a limit for how large of a file we can upload to our handler. Also, before we continue on, I want to mention that in the last tutorial, I kind of mumbled over a, a step inside of our Google Cloud image repository. I clicked the Postgres one there. But in this update profile image method, I had said, oh, we shouldn't use the bucket name or we should use the bucket name environment variable in this URL. And I had hard coded the bucket name where this placeholder string is. However, we already have this bucket name injected into our repository or image repository struct, as you can see here. And then in the package main, we provided this bucket name from an environment variable. So what the heck, just go update your creation of the image URL to contain this r.bucket name. That way, if you need to reload this project on another computer or if someone's coming in and starting from scratch, the environment variables will configure this all for you. The next thing I want to do is inside of the handler layer, I want to create a new file called mimetype.go. And this file is just going to hold a simple map of valid media or mime types. What this will do is make sure that the media type is either a JPEG file or a PNG file. You may want to add other supported image types for your application, and it will be easy to update this with the file type you're interested in supporting. Here's our map of valid types. So we have image JPEG, which I think will usually work for both .jpg and .jpeg files. So both, both types of JPEG files should map to this MIME type. And we'll also accept PNG. And then we create this helper method to just see if the MIME type is in this map. I don't think Go has sets natively, so I created a map that maps the string to true. All right, let's expand our application. I don't know why I collapsed that. And let's create a new file in handler.go for this post image handler. So let's just call this, uh, we'll call it image.go. And we'll create it as package handler. Bada boom. And as we normally do, remember we have the handler.go file here. And this has our methods just dummy methods that didn't hold any data. Let's save this and go back to image.go and paste it here and hopefully do some imports. There we go. Furthermore, this handler will require the authorization token or details about the authorized user. And I just noticed that I made a huge error. I moved the delete handler, which is for next time's tutorial. So let's go back to image.go, <laughs> let's cut this, go to handler, save that baby, cut this one. 
You see, I got ahead of myself. I got too excited for the next tutorial. Maybe I should have just cut that out and uh, save you guys the time, but maybe you'll enjoy my flaws. All right, now we'll go back to Handler, and we need to make sure that this image on the group, the post of image, is going to be handled with the auth middleware. First of all, if we are in test mode, we do not want to use the middleware. But up here, these are the handlers for when we are in dev mode or prod mode or when we're not in test mode. And we will want to use this auth user middleware, which I will paste like so. And now we should be able to work on our actual image handler logic. Except that I lied. As always, there's one more piece of configuration to add. And the piece of configuration we're going to add is what is the largest request body that we can read into our handler. And to do this, I want to update our handler struct here, right here, and the config to take in the max number of bytes that we want to be able to receive on all of our handlers. Now this is particularly particularly important for this image handler so people don't try to upload vast amount of data that will wreck our application. We'll call this max body in bytes and this will end up needing to be a 64-bit integer. We will also need a max body bytes in the config and not byte but bytes. So let's fix that. Bytes and in 64 and then in the config, we will need to inject this like so. Oops, it already put the colon for me and max body bytes. And I should be able to save that. Excellent. And of course, we'll need to provide this in an environmental, environmental variable. So let's go to our env.dev file. And let's add this as a max body bytes. Let's see, let's put that in alphabetical order here. Max body bytes. And the number I'm going to add here is equivalent to four megabytes. So this number 4194304 is basically the same as four times 1024 and then times 1024 again. And then we need to make sure to properly inject this into our handler layer. And the injection takes place in injection.go. So let's see where is our handler here. It should be towards the bottom after we do our services. Right here, we get the handler timeout. And maybe we'll do it just below. So just like we parsed the handler timeout and then converted it to a 64-bit int, we will do the exact same thing for the max body bytes. So we'll get that environment variable we just sent or just set, and then we will parse it as an int64. And we will add it to our new handler factory. Let me fix all those caps there. There we go. And it's called MBB. And now for real, we can do our post image handler logic by going back to image here. As I'm known to do, I will add all of the logic and then we'll go through it step by step. This will be long, but given that we've already created a lot of the logic that the handler interfaces with, I hope it'll make pretty good sense. So I've just copied and pasted the code and then performed automatic imports. We're going to get the user with a must get and cast it to user and this remember is the key that is set by the auth user middleware we're then going to take the gen request body and set it equal to this max byte reader and let's take a look at this function it says that max byte readers result is a read closer returns a non end of file error for a read beyond the limit and closes the underlying reader when its closed method is called all right max byte oops Max bytes reader prevents clients from accidentally or maliciously sending a large request and wasting resources. So basically, it can terminate reading in the request body and free up your resources if it is too large. We will then reset our request body. So we're kind of updating our request body here. And we are setting the value 
to that max body bytes that we just injected into our handler layer. Next, we're going to use a utility method to get the image file from our HTTP request. Now this HTTP request is not going to be using JSON with text like we normally use, but rather we're going to upload the image as a multi-part form file. Maybe there's some debate whether that's the proper type, but that is what I've used. Then we're going to check for any errors. First of all, so if this error is not nil, we're going to just log it for our internal use because we're not calling any service layer, so we need to log in our actual handler. And if the error is HTTP colon space request body too large, that would be the error that occurs here. And so our actual parsing of the form file would see that error if it is reached. And so if it's that error, we'll send a very specific error showing that the max body size is that max body bytes. And we'll actually use this special status request entity to large, which is a HTTP status 413 and HTTP status 413. I've been getting my A's and ands incorrect a lot lately. And if the error is some other type of error, we'll say that it's a status 400 bad request and that we're unable to parse the form. Next, we'll check to make sure there is actually an image file. So maybe there's no error, but the user just didn't provide an image file. And in that case, we'll send a bad request that you must include an image file. The next step is to use the MIME type helper that we just created. And I get, I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to first get the image file, which has a header property, which has a get to get whatever various different fields there are on the header. So we want the content type header. This will be the MIME type. And then we'll pass that to the function we created earlier. Remember that checks to make sure it's a JPEG or a PNG. If it's not valid, then we'll return another new bad request error to say that it needs to be JPEG or PNG. And we'll check this out in Postman shortly. We extract the context to send downstream to our service and repository layers as we've done in probably all of our handlers, at the very least, most of them. And we'll call set profile image, which you may recall from last time or not, returns a new updated user which could have the image on it or an updated image. If there's an error, we'll forward whatever that error type was and we'll use our app errors status method to sort of cast the error to a specific type or check the type of the error to see if it is one of our app errors. And if all goes well, we'll just return the image URL from the updated user. And last time I mentioned that we don't need to return the entire user and you could choose to do your API differently if you want. And then a message of success, which probably isn't necessary because we're already sending a status OK. Now remember, I'll add unit tests for this in the repository. But for now, let's just try running this with Docker and make sure our images upload and that our database updates. I'm in the account directory, so let's CD up one. And I'm going to run Docker Compose up. And let's hope this works. Also, after this runs, I'm going to open a second terminal window because when Postgres is updating, you get a lot of logs here for it. And I don't want to see all those logs when I want to merely see the account logs. So I just want to see what happens with these various handlers. In fact, I'll just shrink this very small. And then I'm going to use something called Docker Compose logs and then dash F, meaning to follow the logs. Uh, to show a stream of the logs and not just print out the current logs and exit. I want to actually continue following the logs. And then you enter the service name in your Docker Compose, which is account for this application. So you can see we can actually see only our account stuff here. And when, because when you open Postgres or PG Admin, you just get all the Postgres logs here, which is kind of a pain when you want to see your handler logs. Of course, you could also run this in detached mode with dash D and then separately just get the logs for whichever services you are interested in. Let's open the Postman here. I already started testing the delete image, but we don't have that endpoint yet. You see that I have a post for the base URL, which remember we set up a long time ago as malcorp.test. 
and the base is API account for this application and the image handler. To set a form data type, you can click this little form data radio button, and then we want to use the key image file if that was not clear. If we go back here into the handler, I just want to make clear that we say C form file and we look for the key image file. So that's why we're using image file. Now let's just see if we have any users. So first of all, we'll need to be signed in. I'm going to sign in as guy01. And just to start with a clean slate, let's go into Postgres PG admin. And I'll connect here and let's just make sure we have a guy01 and that they don't have a user. So guy02 2021 has an image URL, but guy01 one does not. Okay, so we're starting with a clean slate as far as guy01 goes. So let's maybe try to post the image without any token, first of all. And great, we should get an authorization error from our middleware. Let's sign in. And as always, remember that this ID token is automatically set to a variable for us using this test script line here. So now we can go to post image. Let's make sure we have that authorization header set in the bearer token. And here's the variable set with that previously retrieved ID token. And in the body, again, image file, and we loaded a JPEG file here. So maybe let's just do this from scratch. I'll select files and select my profile picture. And I'm not very good looking, but you know, whatever. That's why I'm a developer. And we get an error, so I need to figure out what's wrong. So it turns out that I had a service account file. Remember, this gives us permissions to access our Google Cloud project. But for some reason, the permissions were not right on that. So I had to go to my console and update that. But if you follow the instructions in the previous two tutorials, you should be OK. OK, let's now test this out. Now, I had just tested this post image handler. But just to prove to you, we have nothing inside of the Google Cloud project. And if I query guy01 has no image. All right, let's test this. First, maybe let's try an image that is too big. So I put this big 24 megapixel photo of the Mojave National Preserve. And let's try to upload this. And we get that error that our max request body is under four megabytes. Let's now maybe test a text file. Here we go, and let's send that. And it is not an image PNG or image JPEG. Excellent, working pretty well. And let's try something that should actually work, like a JPEG. And there we go, and we get a URL. And let's see this in Postgres. There's that URL, it ends in 2C8ED. And let's refresh our bucket here. And there we go, that's that same image. And let's make sure it's the right image. And I'm gonna just open this in Postman to get the image. And there is the image. Let's try to replace this image now with another PNG. So this is just some random logo I had made for a restaurant app. Looks like Roku, I'm probably gonna get sued by them. But <laughs> let's go ahead and send this. And you can see the image URL is the same. But if we go to get the image now, it is updated with this little PNG. Awesome. Well, damas y caballeros, that is it for today. Sorry about some of the hangups, but I hope you enjoyed this. Next time, we'll write all of the code necessary to delete this image. This will be a bit simpler because the handler doesn't really require any logic, basically. And the service layer is also a lot simpler. We've also already dealt with setting up cloud storage, which was a bit of the hangup. So take a deep breath, one tutorial left on the account application, and then we can move on to some front end work in Vue, which will be a client to access this account application. Anyway, que se cuiden, hasta pronto, nos vemos en el próximo.